It's the ocean's song and symphony, and if you're lucky enough to hear the music, your life is never the same. Part ballet, part high-velocity sport. Surfing is part of the very tapestry of California. The surfers who ride those waves require a bit of magic, which brings us to one of the sport's true artists, surfboard shaper Doug Hout. For 50 years, Hout's been creating, crafting, and shaping surfboards for the sport that he loves. It's really cool to, to create something and then you see the effect of what you've created out in the water and somebody enjoying it with a smile on their face. So you know you did something good in your life. Born in Wisconsin, Hout moved west with his family in the 1950s to Los Altos. When he was 15, Hout began navigating Highway 17 to Santa Cruz, and in 1957, he discovered surfing. I saw the guy surfing on the boards and I said, I, I've got to learn that. that, that looks way too cool. Because uh, you, like, you get a ride in, but you paddle back out, so I got a little bit of both. I got the good exercise and I got a thrill for the labor of paddling out, so that was way cool. According to Hout, surfing in Santa Cruz in the late 1950s and early 60s was paradise. There just weren't many guys in the lineup. It was wide open. There was nobody here hardly, you know? I mean. Pleasure Point was almost a secret spot, you know, and, and uh, it was Four Mile and Waddell Creek and uh, all those spots were, you know, nobody even surfed them because there was no need to because you had waves right here and the conditions in Santa Cruz are so good because of, it's tucked into the bay and the prevailing winds are usually on the outside so you have a lot of real nice uh, conditions for a glassy wave. An excellent swimmer and natural athlete. Hout excelled in the water and on a board. It wasn't long before he parlayed his skill as a surfer into a way of making a living. He started shaping boards in Hawaii in 1961. Eventually, he returned to Santa Cruz and worked for the surf legend, Jack O'Neill. And then I worked for another company, uh, George Olson Surfboards, and I started doing some main, uh, mainstream shaping for him. And then I just broke off from him and uh, I started my own shop in 1965. Hout has been in the same location on the west side of Santa Cruz since 1969, and he's never eased up in his pursuit of the perfect board. Well, the, the shaper's got to have a passion for what he's doing. He has to have a feel for what he's doing. He's got to put together designs that work for his area. This keeps going because uh, the designs are always in, in constant refinement. You know, and we learn new things every year. And the kids start doing more maneuvers, so you have to build equipment to make those maneuvers happen. And, and it's just like, it's a never ending story. How to surf some of the most challenging breaks in Hawaii, including Waimea and Sunset, but he spent most of his time in his home waters of Santa Cruz. During that time, he figures that he shaped close to 30,000 boards. That's right, 30,000. If there's one thing that he's learned in all that time, it's that the customer is always right. Always. Aesthetically, how it looks, you know, and how it rides. You know, basically how it rides because some boards, they don't really look that good, but they ride really good, so. And some of them, it's, it's all in the eyes of the beholder. Some guys will see a design on a board, they'll hate it. I'll have it in the lineup here. They go, God, how'd you pick those colors? And another guy will come and go, God, that's the best looking surf I've ever seen in my life. I mean, a lot of them are repeat customers. You know, they've I've built boards for some of these guys that were growing up when they were teenagers and now I'm building boards for their kids and them. So it's kind of a, kind of a big family. Once Hout is done shaping, the glasser applies the fiberglass to the board and you're one step closer to not only a finished product, but a potential masterpiece. Over the years, Doug Hout's boards have become exceptionally valued as pieces of art. Yeah, well, they collect them. It's uh, uh, like anything, uh, people want things that they can collect because uh, not only are they beautiful, but they also gain a value. Like some boards that I make uh, made years ago, are, they're worth ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. You know, so they paid one hundred and fifty for them or two hundred for them. Now they're worth fifteen grand. So after fifty years and that many boards, why is he still at it? Well, the answer is pretty simple. He is passionate about what he does. I enjoyed it so much, and uh, I just 
because this it, I'm kind of an artist that but this is the way I could express myself uh, creating things that people enjoy and also I enjoyed it myself and it's a never-ending learning process I'm, I mean I'm been shaping for I've shaped almost 30,000 surfboards and I'm still learning how to do it so there's no end to it it just keeps going and going and going the evolution of surfboard design is a is a spiral evolution so boards we do here and the spiral spiral it'll come back again maybe 10 years later you'll have another the same board you did down here but it'll be more refined so it's a continuous refinement of the designs that are out there right now and it's just never ended the next time you're out admiring the athletes surfing the waves remember the man and the composer who builds the boards and who always hears the ocean song <laughs>